Colin, uh, thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, obviously, there's been some excitement, certainly around this drug. Uh, it's seemingly been in the market to some degree. Uh, what What is your call based on in terms of where that can go revenue-wise, and, and why do you think the market hasn't already figured it out? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things to point out here, right? So the drug launched in diabetes in May. To date, this has been the most successful launch in diabetes ever. We had, uh, subsequently, we had data in obesity after that, which is really where this outsize opportunity comes from. And the drug showed a best-in-class profile that we've ever seen for a therapeutic in diabetes. And, you know, as a headline data point, the, the drug led to a 21% mean reduction in body weight, which, you know, to put this into context, with bariatric surgery, you're in the ballpark of 25%. So really, this is a new paradigm of treatment, or could be a new paradigm of treatment in, uh, in obesity. And Lydia is potentially going to file this drug for approval in obesity by the end of this year. So we took up our estimates to 25 billion from 20 billion, which would give this drug the accolade of being the, you know, the, the highest selling drug ever. And um, street consensus is currently at around 15 billion. We just see this number as stale. And as Lily subsequently file and the launch continues to execute, we expect numbers to come up to eventually uh, meet or exceed ours. That $25 billion estimate, what goes into that in terms of the number of patients and, and pricing and how long they take it for? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, um, so I, I want to point out a couple of things here. Like one, this is already approved in diabetes. And yeah. so if you look at the market this is operating in, the GLP-1 market was around 16 billion in sales last year. And so by our estimate, we think Manjaro can do around 10 billion in diabetes alone. So that leaves around 15 billion from our obesity estimate. Now turning to obesity, there's around 108 million obese people in the US. And for Manjaro to reach, say, 20 billion in peak sales in the U.S. alone, you'd have to treat 1.6 million patients at the current price point, which mm. equates to less than 1.5% uh, of that obese population. Now, you know, we can right. argue, like, what is the true size of that treatment-seeking, compliant, reimbursed population? Even if it were one-fifth of that, you'd still only need a 7.5% share of that population to get right. to your 20 billion number. And then I just wanted to get at the valuation of Lilly because, you know, it, it, it is certainly about double the PE of comps like Bristol Myers or Merck or whatever. Uh, and so you're saying that that's, that's fully justified? Yeah, so let's, you know, Lilly's trading at sort of low 30s multiple in 2023 EPS. Uh, our price target is based on a 36 times multiple on Ford EPS. And so w when you look at the growth profile of Lilly, you have double digits, so 10% plus and 20% plus sustained top and bottom line growth, largely mm -hmm. driven by this asset. And so it definitely deserves a premium multiple. You know, we believe Liddy could do in excess of $20 in EPS by 2026. And if you look mm -hmm. at other comps that are generating those sort of, that sort of growth from a diversified revenue base that's sustainable, you, know, you look to the animal health comps, they're trading at 30 yeah. to 40 times. Yeah, uh, certainly uh, not too common to see that kind of growth uh, at this point. Colin, thank you very much. Appreciate you running through the call with us. Thank you.